A few years back, I made a lesson on how to play Folsom Prison Blues that covered the solo played by legendary session guitarist Reggie Young when he played with Johnny Cash in the country supergroup, The Highwaymen. Since then, a few site members have asked me if I could um, make a lesson on the solo as played by Luther Perkins on the original 1955 studio recording of this classic country blues tune. So here it is. The 1955 recording came out in the key of F, but live footage of the Tennessee Three playing this song at that time clearly shows that they played it in E. Now whether they tuned up a semitone or whether the tape got speeded up, uh, speeded up at some point in the recording process, we may never know. But I'm going to show it now in the key of E, and I suggest that if you want to play it along to the record, you simply add a capo at fret 1. break this down a lick at a time. Over the E chord, Luther is working with notes from the E 7th arpeggio, at the top end here, starting with a flat third. So that's the note here, uh, G at fret 8 on the second string, sliding that up to the major third, the G sharp at fret 9, adding the fifth, the B note at fret seven on the top string. Then the note that turns the chord into a seventh chord, the D uh, at fret 10 on the top string. So to visualize this, you could think of the difference between an E minor chord played there with a bar at fret seven using an A minor shape, and then the major, the E major chord using the A major shape and then the seventh chord using that shape. So that's where these notes come from. Here's the tab for those first two bars. The first phrase is then repeated. And then fourth time through, we add a couple of extra notes. to the third and the root note of that major chord shape again. So you're coming down the A-shaped E chord. Now, although Luther plays it that way, I'm going to suggest that you use this root instead. Finding the same two notes here in the D-shaped E chord, because that's going to help you connect more easily to the next part of the solo. So here's the tab for bars three and four. Unless you have big hands, the next part is probably going to be the hardest part of the solo to play. This is based on a G-shaped A major chord. And we just play the top three strings, so we're just holding down um, strings two and three at fret two with a little bar, and then adding the A note on the fifth fret on the top string. And this is picked in a very specific way, really a combination of picking and strumming. So that's down on the uh, single fifth string, and then strumming the top three strings, down up, and then up down. So this is played once like that, then again root note down up, but this time the 
fretting hand leaves the fretboard to move up to the next shape as you play the top two strings open in reverse order. First string, second string. So in slow motion, that's... The next shape can be thought of as the top three notes used to play an E-shaped A major bar chord at fret 5. So you play uh, an A major chord with a bar at the 5th fret and an E shape there, but if we just take the top three strings that gives us this little shape, holding those two strings down at the 5th fret and adding the 3rd string at the 6th fret. And we pick this like this. So that's picking the strings 3, 2, 1 in order before coming back on the open strings again, top string, second string, as the hand shifts up to the next shape. And now we continue to follow the inversions of the A major chord shape on the top three strings up through the cage system to play the D shape rooted on the A at fret 10 on the second string. So this is picked exactly the same as the last shape was picked except for the last note. So we pick 3, 2, 1 and then again open the shape, play the top string open but then jump to the third string open. Something which only really makes sense when we come to the next part of the solo. Here is the tab for the two bars of the A chord. So back to the open E chord now, and Luther played this uh, with the same syncopated rhythm as we've just been using for the previous chords, um, separating out the bass note, open E in this case, and then hitting the top three strings of the chord, down, up, up, down. Except on that very last um, down stroke, he lifts the first finger off the G string, converting it from G sharp to G, effectively changing the chord from E major to E minor. The last two bars of the solo bring us to the B seventh chord, um, and the first bar of which is played with exactly the same rhythm as we've just been using on the E, separating out the bass note, in this case fret 2 on the A string, giving us the B notes. And then it's that same down up, up down rhythm on the top three strings. But then he uses this idea to link us back to the E, hitting the B string twice, uh, sorry, the B root note twice on the A string. down to B flat and then grabbing this F sharp note here bending it up to G and then releasing it back to the F sharp down to A again so all together and then linking back to the rhythm part you enjoyed that and do contact me if you have any questions or if you'd like me to email you a copy of the full tab. And for site members you can download the tab uh, as well as the backing track from the links just next to the video screen. See you again soon.